All right, guys, welcome to Wide Awake News Radio. I'm Charlie McGrath, your host, joined, of course, it is Tuesday, so I'm joined with uh, Eric Lovely. Uh, it is the 12th day of February, Tuesday, and if you are listening and not one of the 40 or so folks we have in chat right now and you want to join them, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can go to wideawakenews.com, click on the microphone on the homepage. That'll take you right into chat. If you want to watch myself and Eric Lovely do this thing live, uh, you can watch us both from uh, from the Justin TV feed that is available in the chat room. Lots of stuff going on. I know Eric wants to talk about the LAPD, and uh, and I, I automatically was thinking it was the uh, that that had to do with uh, Doran, the the ex uh, LAPD officer, ex uh, Navy officer, who is uh, by all accounts. I'm listening to this radio. I got the radio going on the side, internet radio going. Uh, down there in uh, Big Bear, it looks like, uh, well, the reports are the cabin where he was allegedly, air quote, held up, um, they're cooking him. They, this thing's on fire. They're not, uh, they're not putting it out. So, you know, we'll, we'll see if, if it's him. We'll see if we're told it's him. Uh, but I know, Eric, you wanted to go deeper than uh, just that story. Let me just say real quick, in the second hour, um, I'm glad to announce Greg Hunter. I'm finally getting Greg Hunter on. Of uh, USA Watchdog, I've been I've been sending in messages back and forth. Karen's been working hard to get them, uh, and we finally have Greg Hunter of um, USA Watchdog uh, in hour number two. So let's get into it. Uh, lots of stuff going on besides the uh, the uh, held up fugitive. Uh, you, Eric, I want your take on that. Also, though, uh, and I'll probably get more to this with Greg in the second hour. It is the State of the Union address tonight. A lot of people are sitting down right now, opening up their little bags of microwave popcorn, listening, ready to hear a bunch of uh, uh, optimism that is going to be spewed from this uh, this administration, just like we get every year. Uh, but to start off with, let's let's get into the LAPD that you wanted to talk about a little bit. It had, I know you've been following this story of this guy who's held up in the mountains east of Los Angeles. What's your take, man? What's your take? Yeah, I, I know you that, that as soon as reports started coming out about he's a disgruntled LAPD, uh, but was fired for pointing out uh, police abuse, then you probably read his entire manifesto. I haven't read the whole thing. I read some of it, though. It, and it's pretty uh, it's definitely uh, on board with the police state agenda. What is your what is your thoughts? Well, you know, I, I think that there, there's a lot going on. And the, the reason why I've been following Mr. Dorner's. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know what to call it, um, killing spree or, you know, a couple of years ago I told people, I told, I told them that as long as they chose not to act as a unit, as long as they chose to sit in their house and not act as a group and not do the things that they needed uh, to do, that you would start to see lone wolves uh, pop up who would had firepower and ability and attempted to, to then take things into their own hands. I, I think this is what you see happening. My, I have some problems with the situation, though. And if you read his actual manifesto, and don't just read it to consume the information, profile the individual that is inside of this actual manifesto, and you will see uh, something quite alarming and quite disturbing because... Even a schizo I mean, I, I have seen no schizophrenia data or information, no multiple personality disorder, but there are three distinct personalities writing in this manifesto. So either multiple parties wrote this manifesto and call it his, or he's a schizophrenic lunatic. Now, he has showed absolutely no schizophrenic lunacy about him, he has showed no, no multiple personality disorder whatsoever. The military didn't pick up on it. The police didn't pick up on it. You know, nobody picked up on this as he, as he went through grueling, uh, you know, psych evaluations and things of that nature. And at the end of the day, you hear you have this manifesto that's being called his that has three, like I said, distinct personalities. When did, he did you read the whole about, thing? Oh, yeah. When he, yeah, okay. absolutely. When, when he talks about... Um, you know, the, the defilement, the corruption, all of these different things. This is one distinct personality, but his political views, okay, is a completely distinct personality separate to that. Uh, basically, if you take a man who is going to write in a manifesto before he goes out on a killing spree, 
that I don't believe in assault weapons, I believe in Big Brother, I believe in the police state, but now I'm going to take my assault weapon and defend my own freedom on my own because no one will help me. Well, these are two distinctly different ideologies, okay? And they do not live within one being unless they have multiple personality disorders. And I will also point out to say that in multiple personality disorders, <coughs> you, <coughs> display, you display two distinct differences like weakness in one character, weak, mild-mannered, meek, and so forth, and the other one will be an emotionally demonstrative drastic difference than the original personality. Not two different political personalities, okay, which is an interesting thing to find within this documentation. So you're thinking what it's, I, you're thinking it's yeah. are you staged or what? Uh, yeah, well, I, I think that the manifesto has been doctored. Completely yeah. honestly. I think an, out, an exterior policy whipped this thing together, changed the parts and pieces, interjected what they wanted into it, and slapped it online and called it his. Now, yeah, it, it, it wasn't just that. online either. It wasn't just online. This thing was sent. Uh, Anderson Cooper received a package, uh, and, and other mainstream uh, uh, figures uh, in media received packages uh, with his grievances. Take a drink here. And I, th I think that. When you look at the problem with this building on fire, this plays in again to the idea that he's been dead already, okay, and he's in the building, and the reason why they're not going to put it out and bring him out, okay, if you have him surrounded, you can starve him out of the building. Right. There, there's no reason to allow him to burn to death, okay, unless you're attempting to make him suffer, cruel and unusual punishment, or you're attempting to hide something. However, I think that the big problem here isn't just this gentleman. Everybody is attacking this man, and so when I looked at him, what I thought I would do is look into the LAPD. And all I can tell you <laughs> is, oh my God, okay? These are the guys that when they shot up a bunch of people standing on the side of the street, uh, and the parents came out in protest, pregnant women, babies in strollers. They sick the attack dogs on them, okay, in broad daylight. They actually, you know, sick these guard dogs, these German shepherd, uh, foreign trained German shepherd dogs on these women and these children and unarmed individuals who were protesting in their own front lawns, okay. Uh, this is, these are the individuals, if you just look, they cl I, I put two videos because I can't really do much interaction with the chat room. But I put two videos in the in the chat room from 4409 where he covers the story, these two particular stories. The one story is three gentlemen, this is a video, you'll see a policeman pull over on the side of the road. Three gentlemen are walking down the sidewalk. The policeman steps out of his vehicle, turns and looks across the police car at them, and starts a conversation of some kind. One of the gentlemen attempts to run away. And you see nothing but flashes of light out of the policeman's gun, okay? He shoots the man in the back three or four times. Then the man, you see him flop face first in a swan dive right onto the concrete, laying on the ground. And the policeman ends by walking over top of him and putting another round through the back of his spine, killing him. Okay, then the, the police report claimed that the man flashed a nickel-plated handgun, semi-automatic handgun, and that he chased the guy down the street shooting at him and then executed him on the sidewalk in self-defense. <laughs> okay. You put, this, you put this links in already? I'm looking for him in yeah. chat right now. It, 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 no, it's in our chat in, in the Skype. Okay, you can, all right, got it. You can see the two videos. And you'll actually, when you watch the video, it is ridiculous to think that this cop is, is claiming uh, self-defense. However, when it gets to the review board, he is acquitted of all charges, okay? They just closed the case out. It's a two-year-old shooting. And this is, this is an example of what's going on. When they got to the actual court hearing, not a court hearing, internal review board, okay, they presented a wood-handled black 38 long long nose revolver as being the nickel plated gun that the cop claimed he was carrying. Unbelievable. I, I, I see this one's four minutes long. I, I, we'll talk more about this on the back side of the break. We're going to be back with Eric Lovely, more Wide Awake News Radio. Hang tight.
Well, that's a little bit disturbing. I'm going to put these. I'll put the links to these videos in the chat. That uh, there, or did you put them in there already, Eric? No, 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 no. I I just put them into the Skype so that we could access them when we needed them. All right. Well, I, I fast forwarded and uh, and watched both of them uh, during that break, and it's absolutely uh, horrific. One lady that uh, might weigh 120 pounds being pummeled, pummeled by uh, uh, two grown uh, air quote men police officers beating her to a pulp uh, before they could get her into a squad car. Uh, and the other one is that, that snuff film, as Gary described it, of, uh, hmm. of the kid running, catching a few ra- six rounds in the back and then one in the one uh, while he's laying down. Absolutely disgusting. Eric, continue your uh, your talk on LAPD. What what I mean, you, you obviously looked into this uh, because what's going on with this uh, Doran fellow? Well, you know, here's the, the interesting thing. Um, <laughs> you'll find that these two videos are, are very disturbing, and they're actual video evidence. But if you actually go and you look at the internal affairs number, okay, here, <laughs> there are over 113 complaints from either, in just this month, from either elderly or handicapped disabled individuals against the LAPD, okay, of abuse charges where they've physically been manhandled. You, they had these open, um, oh, they, they want to have these open town hall meetings like the ones that are going on now in New Mexico where the FBI is uh, supposedly investigating the Albuquerque police force. And the FBI is saying that they're that they that they have a if enough people petition that they will attempt to look into the LAPD police force as well. And what was funny is is that the individuals who came to this open town hall that the, the, and the ones in LA are they're supposed to be ran the same way as the ones that are going on in Albuquerque. Well, if you went to the FBI open house meeting. You had to sign your name. You had to put down the information, your your street address and whatnot. Huh. And then the <laughs> FBI was voluntarily handing the complaints and all of this data about where these people lived directly over to the Albuquerque Police Department. So it's a good way to get so, yourself killed. Yeah. It, I mean, you know, the, right now. See something, say something, as long as it's against your neighbor. But if it's against uh, enforcement then you're going to die, or you potentially Absolutely. could. Absolutely. And, and, well, I mean, these, these people in, in, in California, I mean, in the LAPD, these people are insanely, insanely corrupt from what I can see. Month after month after month, you see hundreds to thousands of charges from women, from young teenagers to elderly to mentally handicapped people. You know, you have one where the guy and this woman inside, you can see the police footage, from inside one of the jails, the individual is drunk, obviously drunk, and in the wheelchair, okay? They, they wheel him in to arrest him for public intoxication, and the lady and the man at the jail, okay, the two police officers there at the jail, pick the guy up out of the chair and slam him face first onto the ground, and they said, well, I know he's lying, so I better guess up, get up and walk away now. And he's just laying there bleeding on the floor because he's paralyzed from the waist down. They call him a liar. They threw him out of his wheelchair. Onto, you know, uh, the, 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 the woman that, that there was a lady, they called, she called the police for help. They went to the house and something she said to the police officers while she was there Okay, oh, it was about suicide. And she asked the question, they had asked her if she was thinking of, thought of, had thought about suicide. And she said, now or ever, as in, have I ever thought about it? Or So they Baker acted her. They took her to the police department. Three women and four men crawl in a cell with her and strip her completely naked, okay, which is against any morals you could possibly have, as well as the law. Okay, a man cannot strip search a woman unless he has a court order and no other way to accomplish the job. And he has to go and get a court order to do it if he has no female police officers. And so on and on, you look at another lady that goes in for a breathalyzer test, okay, and she, one moment, she's handcuffed behind her back. 
She's talking to the officer. The officer is pointing at her. She spits on the officer. Then the camera stops. Then the camera comes back on, and she's laid face down on the floor in a four-foot pool of blood. Okay. Yeah, and the stretchers that. come in. And it, 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 the, the whole entire... This whole entire thing that there are somehow, you see, these are the things that tell me when people say that there are, 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 are good police officers. And I know people want to argue this point all the time. But if, where, if these police officers are good and they exist, how come they haven't formed a task force to take care of the ones that aren't good? How come they haven't put handcuffs on their own brethren? How come they haven't marched into the LAPD or into the mayor's office of Los Angeles? and drug him out by his short and curlies and carted him off to prison. How, how come this hasn't happened in Atlanta? How come this, in Baltimore, okay, it, <clears throat> there is street violence. There are young uh, African American and, and white males in, and, and, and females roaming around in mobs in Baltimore, mugging and beating and abusing people, <laughs> and, and the police officers don't care about that section of town, and admittedly so, and said, oh, there's no problem. Don't worry about it. You know, the, the, we're, uh, I continually ask anyone who tells me, okay, there's a good police officers out there. Oh, why? Because they stopped and got a cat out of a tree? Or, you know, they stopped and hand out some toys along the side of the road? They're not doing their job, so they're used to it. Well, and, and, and we'll talk about that on the back side of the break, you know. The the ones who they might presumably just barbecued, uh, it all started with him lodging a complaint uh, about abuse. We're going to be back with Eric Lovely. More Wide Awake News Radio. Hang tight. All right. Welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Eric Lovely and myself, Charlie McGrath, on this 12th day of February, Tuesday. Eric, uh, you know, you talked about uh, anybody standing up inside the police department. Well, uh yeah, you certainly don't hear a lot of cases of that, but now we're hearing one where a guy did. Uh, and, you know, I believe, if, if memory serves, this happened in 2008 when, when he was uh, fired. And it's been so all this time brewing inside of him, uh, trying to, uh, you know, trying to be heard, trying to get some help from within the department uh, through his supervisors, through his superiors. And outside the department. And, and outside, yeah. But go ahead. He, when, when he, when he, basically, what happened is when he filed these disputes, he went through two years of just pure hell where the department uh, basically uh, they brought in character witnesses against them, which is the one lady who got shot, but they don't want to talk about it. The one kid, uh, she's not an innocent. She took part in the actual activities um, used as a character witness, witness, not against him, but for the training officer. Oh, this training officer is such a wonderful, loving person and oh they you have kids they would have never kicked an elderly person in the chest oh how dare you for saying such things so they put themselves in the line of fire other police officers lied blah 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 so he is he's now has his license revoked his certifications revoked they didn't just fire him they revoked all of his certifications and basically blackballed him so they couldn't work anywhere for anyone in his line of duty ever again Okay, that's basically what they took away from him. They called him a liar. They called him a cheat. They every single name you possibly can in the book. And after he took all of that mess, he then went for two more years and attempted to uh, get injunctions to appeal to a criminal court to sue them to do a, a, any number of legal actions against the LAPD. And every single lawyer and every single judge told him to pound sand. They weren't going to help him. He was basically SOL, including the local office of uh, the secretary, uh, uh, the secretary general. And he called them. He also uh, had a meeting with Eric Holder, or attempted to get a meeting with Eric Holder to uh, get, get to the chief prosecutor in this nation to attempt to help him. And no one would do anything for him. The town, you know, the police officers constantly harassed him. They were constantly giving him parking tickets. They towed his vehicle several times. They just tormented him, even after they stripped him of his entire career. And no one would help him. Now, if no one is there to help you, and no one, is, if you have no outlook of happiness and no outlook of joy, you can't get out of the city. You don't have enough money. You can't get away from them. What is your next option? 
Well, your yeah, next well, option is put the wood to him. I mean, th th this is this is really where he felt he was at. And if you look at the data and information, I believe that's where he was at. Because no citizens weren't helping him. There was no local politicians. No one. No one did any. Everyone avoided him like the. What was the official threat. reason for what was his? I mean, what was the official reason for cutting him loose? I can't well, just come out and say he filed a complaint against a fellow yes. officer. He was cut loose and fired for making false accusations. That's exactly what he was cut loose for. And, you know, it, it, it's really, it, it, it's quite ridiculous when you look at the track record and you look at the things he starts talking about in his manifesto. He, you know, the lesbian sexism, where, you know, the lesbians were uh, within the police force are being sexist and and uh, uh, de depraved towards the male officers, that the black officers were being uh, racist towards the other colored officers, and the white officers were being racist towards other colored officers, and all of this just corruption and bribery. You know, he named the mayor uh, <laughs> of Los Angeles as being corrupt. I mean, this is a very intense situation. And let me tell you, there is nothing... But mountains and mountains and mountains and mountains of evidence proving his claims to be correct about this department, and none of their claims, there is no evidence to support the LAPD's claims about this man. So, you know, uh, uh, people, uh, uh, what, the reason why I wanted to talk about this today is because so many people want an email in, and let me answer, I don't know if he's a, a, a meat dog. I don't know if he is an MK Ultra <laughs> brainwashed killer. You know, I'm not. I, I'm not well versed, and I don't have a list of them hanging on the wall. But if I did, I'd let you know. But I, I, I really don't. Uh, does it? Does it show portrayals in the individual? No, I don't see that individual as, as, because he is someone who is really truly being tormented. He is actually being targeted by the system. And now let's look at the way they went to catch him. Okay, look at the ladies. <laughs> in a blue truck. He doesn't even own a blue truck. It's just the same model truck. It isn't even the same color. And you have three different situations where the police shot first and then cared to identify the suspect afterwards. You have one lady who's already dead. You have one lady who is supposed to recover but in intensive care. They were paper deliveries. There were two women in a truck and they shot him up. If you look at the pictures of the truck, there are 118 bullet holes in that truck. Okay, the other gentleman, the, a police officer didn't identify the vehicle or the individual in the vehicle, and he on purposely T-boned the vehicle, the truck, at an intersection and drove it into a telephone pole to pin the doors together and then proceeded to shoot into the vehicle. But only by, you know, God's grace, the driver of the vehicle took no rounds in his body. Okay. And you have another indi two individuals. One, they are both of these individuals in the third shooting in a blue truck. Okay, I didn't know it was blue truck season in California, but th these gentlemen were neither one of them. Okay, and I, I don't normally talk about the racial thing uh, at all because I don't really care. But when you're looking for a 275 pound muscular behemoth black man and you're shooting into a truck at two white guys maybe just maybe you might have it wrong okay but that's what these people are doing okay they're just aimlessly gunning certain people down in the streets okay the the the, the LAPD if you ask me has to be dismantled it, it is probably I don't know which one's worse it may I think it's more corrupt than the Chicago Police Department and the New York Police Department I, 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 I'm looking at the actual cases, looking at what's going on in California. I have to say that it's probably the most corrupt police department in the entire nation. And this is the thing, ladies and gentlemen. These people, if they're supposed to be such good guys, okay, and your life is a mess, it is on the line but isn't on the line right now, what makes you think they're going to do anything for you in the future? What, where are these, these white knights with badges that everyone keeps telling me exist? Because you know what? All I see is a lot of mayhem, a lot of torture, a lot of pain, and a lot of suffering. And I don't see any good guys. I don't see any good guys anywhere, okay? Except for maybe one who lost his cool and he's burning to death in some cabin somewhere. That, that's the reality of how I see this. 
you know, one man in a massive city cesspool of crap who just couldn't take it anymore and said he was, I'm going to put the wood to you. And, and you know, I don't know what state we want to talk about. You have internal affairs investigations by the FBI in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, down here in Albuquerque in New Mexico, Utah, Wyoming, Washington State, New York. Okay, if you look, it is, well, I'll tell you the number. It's 39 of the 50 states have FBI investigations against the major municipality police departments within those states. You have Barack Hussein Obama, and see, here's the kicker. This is the reason why the FBI is investigating them, because Obama is looking to nationalize the police departments and turn them into one federal cohesive unit. And he's using the decay and the social depravity that the FBI is digging up so that he can then for carry out legislation to federalize them all and everything's going to be all better because, well, Barack Obama's on watch, Eric Holder, you know, those good guys, the, those gunwalker guys, they're going to be in charge of the police departments and making them all perform nicely and treat you right and respect your rights and so forth. I mean, this is, it, it is simply disgusting and it is time that the American citizen themselves, hey, arm yourselves, police your own streets, surround these police departments, and dismantle them. No doubt about it. All right, we're going to be back with Eric Lovely. Final segment in this first hour. Hang tight, guys. We'll be right back. All right, guys. Welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Charlie McGrath, Eric Lovely. Coming up here uh, in the top of the second hour, Greg Hunter of USA Watchdog is going to be our guest for that hour. We'll probably uh, spend most of that talking about uh, uh, economic, political, State of the Union, that kind of thing. But in this final segment with Eric, we were talking off off uh, uh, during the break. And, you know, Eric had mentioned earlier that about his background, you know, he, he wasn't just uh, he wasn't just a, a swabby in the in the Navy like Eric was. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> He, he was he was the real deal. I mean, security force uh, officer, a lieutenant, which would be a captain in in uh, the army, uh, absolutely had to have clearance, had to have psych eval, that kind of thing. Uh, stellar career there, went into LAPD. Everything that uh, you know that we're portrayed as a patriotic uh, American should be, and then to have this go down. Uh, and, and as Gary was pointing out during the break, all kinds of reports about he's in Mexico, he's in Argentina, and he's sending letters saying, wait, this ain't me. But what I found the most curious, Eric, uh, is when this all happened, you know, we've we've all lived through uh, what could be false flag type events uh, or could be legitimate uh, nuts going, you know, off their kilter and uh, and putting out letters and putting out videos and that kind of thing. And it is difficult at best to find them. This thing, this manifesto, was everywhere. It was super, everything uh, uh, as far as the past that we're supposed to absorb is super easy to find on this guy. Uh, and, and it doesn't, like you said earlier, it doesn't reflect the kind of life he's led. It makes It makes no sense how somebody that, that could be apparently so dedicated uh, to his country could and and have the kind of weaponry he has and the kind of indoctrination in weaponry he has uh, and assuming that he he you know truly was uh, a decorated officer in the navy understands the constitution somewhat and would be so anti uh, everything that uh, that comes out of that in his manifesto yeah, I bizarre. mean, this is where there's, it's definitely bizarre. That's why I say there are distinct different personalities that are speaking in that manifesto. Okay, one or more of those, uh, I would say, two of them are, are not him. Which one I think is him is the anti-government, uh, you know, I, I have no hope left. The government won't respond. They must do things uh, X, Y, and Z. The whole yay, yay, government, kumbaya ban all the weapons, that, that is a completely different individual. Now, I, I, I would have to lean towards that not being him because, as you just stated, for all of the reasons you just stated, yeah. I don't it see how that up. could be that individual. It and doesn't add know, up. It, it doesn't add up. TV? 
I think so. Gary, okay, still go ahead. Him. Please continue. I, I was gonna say it, it just it doesn't add up because unless he had, you know, like a, a, some kind of severe trauma, you know, a, a brain injury or you know some kind of super severe torture that happened to him at some point in his career. But apparently that never happened. I mean, he was in Afghanistan, uh, and from what we can gather, what I can gather is uh, he was in a combat zone, but never really pulled the trigger on anybody. So I, I don't. I, I, it just doesn't make sense with, with, uh, without that trigger event other than what has happened to him over the last four years with the LAPD. Everything that has molded this person's life up until this point suggests that what they're putting out as his manifesto can – it just doesn't seem possible to me. And, and you also see that they did an emergency session signature okay, to be able to deploy drones – Oh yeah, in I saw that. Civilian too. area. Now they're going to attempt to instill an actual law to carry and conduct to help along the police departments using the actual uh, uh, the actual uh, drones on a regular basis. The reason why I asked for JTV because I got a message and someone heard us talking about the the M44 and the uh, the the AK platform 762. So I'm gonna try and hold them up so that they can actually see if you notice the uh, 762 by 54 r is much much larger it is a longer range weapon uh, it travels faster more, more feet per second and a longer uh, uh, a longer uh, distance shot with that particular weapon about twice as far you can make positive kill shots that those are for the six or so people who ask the question what's the difference because they've never seen a 762 by 54 r before uh, it is an old gun. But, you know, when we start talking about these guys, I, I really have to come back to that it is time that, that we hit a massive reset on society, okay, because th these police officers, what I really want people to do, if people don't understand where cops came from, cops and police officers are not the same thing. A cop is a citizen on patrol. It manifests its, itself through law uh, of posse comitatus, and you need to read that where it talks about you will own uniform and you will switch and rotate and take patrols in your community. People really don't have any idea what's in Posse Comitatus, but it actually tells you how you're, you, as a member of your own militia, will take on duties and details to police your community and aid your fellow citizens one day a week, uh, one day a month, whatever it is, on a rotation. And this is the reason why these things are being, uh, have been stricken from the law and they don't educate you on them and they don't show it to you in school because if you understood and applied posse comitatus and gave your gave up one day a month okay one day one eight hour day a month you would have need no police force there would be no such thing as a police force it would simply evaporate into thin air you would go back to having the, the two-tier police department, which is the militia and the sheriff, okay? The way it's been for so long before police officers were ever created. And th these are the things that people need to understand. The system doesn't work. You cannot turn these things over to these people because they abuse it and they're abusing you. Now, you know, it used to be bribery and money. Now they're just openly killing people on the street. Okay, the, the, this is, it's ridiculous. It is time we stop. It is time we start actually thinking about our neighbor. It is time we stop keeping up with the Joneses. It's time we, we you know we turn our backs on the mentality from these public uh, education systems, from the colleges. Okay, these things must come to an end. They're going to come to an end either brutally against you, or in your own favor. You can take it whatever way you want, but the end is nigh. And I don't mean, you know, per se the end of the world, but the end of what, uh, the end of this system is, is definitely nigh. And we're going to move into something that's worse, or we're going to have a renaissance, we're going to go the other direction, and we're going to create something better. Now, either way, those are your two options, okay? This is only going to proceed to get worse. And I encourage people, don't read the entire Constitution, okay? Read all of American law and have a full understanding. What does that mean? That means you need to read 
and understand, not from your interpretation, go back and understand the time period that these things were written in, understand the language and the people within that time period that it was written in, and then extrapolate and apply those lessons to today. Don't attempt to interpret into what you think it means for today, because they've rearranged the words. Learn what it meant for them back then, and then you will understand the Constitution. But you're going to want to start with the Declaration of Independence. You're going to want to read the Articles of Confederation. Okay, All of these things are still law today, and you need to do this. You need to understand where people like me are coming from before this turns into the biggest bloodbath you've ever seen. I don't think it's going to be stopped, but you're going to need to know these things in the future. When you're done with the Articles of Confederation, don't jump right into the Constitution. Go to the state conventions and look at the actual signing notes, look at the statements, look at the speeches that were given at the ratification conventions. And you will see they hash out every single problem, every single thing that we talk about today, from, from firearms and weaponry and retaining ownership of their own artillery pieces, retaining ownership of their own ex explosions, retaining ownership of their own cavalry divisions, the whole entire thing, okay, is mapped out for you. And then when you're done with those documents, you need to move into the Constitution itself, but actually stay within the state conventions. But because the state convention, those notes and those documents are actually going to show you how they rejected the Constitution, okay, because it didn't have the Bill of Rights. And it gives their actual reasons why they did it, what it meant to them, why they said that it wasn't secure enough. And, and if you don't read these things, then you aren't going to know anything. And you have to do the same thing for the ratification conventions around posse comitatus. Because the states actually physically said that they knew that the ratification of the posse comitatus had to happen because they made a mistake in backing Abraham Lincoln. They made a mistake in backing the Federalists. And they attempted to backpedal their way out of it by ratifying posse comitatus and making it part of the original Constitution. You know, these are the things you need to do. And you need to actually go back and read them and educate yourself on what they meant in the time period and then extrapolate forward into your world and see if those morals and principles are being applied. You will, you trust me, I think you already know the answer, but you need to have a full grasp on that. And you'll understand, and once you read these things, you will then truly understand that your constitution didn't die 10 years ago. It didn't die 20 years ago. It died a long, long time ago, many, 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 many presidents ago. And the presidents that have attempted to put the ship right again and put us on a course back to the constitution have been killed and left in the dustbin of history. Okay? You want to talk about Jackson. You can talk about... Uh, you know the Kennedys. Whether you like to think about it or not, yeah, he was he was a whoremonger and hoodlum, but there was some good there. Okay, there are different things. Ronald Reagan made an attempt. He tried to block the CIA expansion powers, and he got shot at. Okay, these are realities that you have to understand and understand that there is no man in office or woman. There is no office of the land that can change this for you. Even if you put, let's say, Charlie in as president and me as vice president, okay, and you said, all right, you guys go up there and fix it. We can't do it. It's, we, there's no, the, the, if, the, if we make enough noise, they'll simply just kill us and be done with it. Okay? This is going to take a lot more people, at least 3 to 5%. If we only have 3 to 5%, this is going to be bloody. If we have 20 or 30%, well, we can avert some of the bloodshed. Eric, well, I wanted to get Bert in there. You were on a poll, so I didn't. Uh, I wanted to talk to you, and maybe we'll talk about this on Thursday a little bit. Uh, the the formation of the national police, uh, because uh, the, we we certainly could see that on the horizon. All right, Eric Lovey, thank you very much. You'll be back uh, Thursday, hour number one, of course, uh, on Wide Awake News Radio. Coming up uh, next hour, Greg Hunter of USA Watchdog. All right, guys, hang tight. We'll be back in a few.